Um, after the speech of Margaret Tempero, we are going to see again the, the, the problem of the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Uh, first, um, we always have to take into account the, clin uh, the, the clinical context uh, because um, the error of diagnosis of pancreatic cancer are very deleterious, uh, uh, certainly uh, from a psychological point of view. It's important to have to take into account the age, the general status, but as also the tobacco, the alcohol consumption, tobacco for the risk of cancer, alcohol for the risk of pancreatitis. History, personal history of pancreatitis, change in weight recently, diabetes, and familial history of cancer, but not only digestive, not only pancreatic, but also gynecologic and skin, melanoma. When you want uh, to, to perform a diagnosis of pan pancreatic mass, you do ha not have to trust too much to serum markers. The CR99 is probably the most wor worldwide used marker, but he has uh, many uh, drawbacks. First, uh, they are false negative due to a natural phenotype of patient, Lewis B negative, and this affects seven to 10 percent of population. And in this patient, no CR99 can be detected in the serum, so uh, it's possible to, to miss a pancreatic cancer if you trust this marker now. And false positive are very uh, frequent with benign cholestasis, chronic pancreatitis, liver cirrhosis, diabetes, and other cancer, particularly biliary or stomach and colon. And in uh, this uh, disease, value of CR99 can be very high. In, in, it can reach uh, thousand or more of uh, units uh, for a benign disease of uh, biliary obstruction, for example. And uh, there are many attempts to find new markers uh, in the serum and the blood, for example, in Kairos, uh, antibody against P53. More recently, circulating tumor cells have shown to be somewhat promising uh, for the diagnosis and maybe for the prognosis. And other uh, recent markers have been proposed, but uh, they are not yet validated. And even this marker can be influenced by the jaundice and the specificity can decrease. So there is a lot of work remaining to do, and we cannot use this marker routinely. Finally, uh, there are some imaging methods. Uh, shortly, you can uh, distinguish a focal pancreatitis from a cancer, or have an approach to make this distinction. Uh, in a focal pancreatitis, you have a, a long and incomplete stenosis, uh, while in cancer, it is short and clear. And uh, in the cancer, this is at the same level of uh, common bilary duct, so it may help to, to distinguish a cancer from a pancreatitis. But sometimes it's difficult. Here you have an imaging of stop on the main pancreatic duct, an upstream enlargement. Is it a cancer? Is it pancreatitis? If you perform only MRI, you can miss a, the right diagnosis, and the diagnosis is, in fact, a calcification into a pancreatic, chronic pancreatitis that can mimic a malignant stop using only MRI. And as said Margaret before me, uh, chronic pancreatitis is often present uh, beside a cancer. In a segment of pancreas, there's focal enlargement of main pancreatic dust, uh, upstream mass, and uh, by itself, chronic pancreatitis is a risk factor of cancer. The risk is relatively high, 10, uh, 15 uh, fold. But uh, from individual point of view, the risk in patients with chronic pancreatitis is pretty low. It's about 5%. Uh, and it's very difficult to assess uh, the mass into uh, chronic pancreatitis on imaging. And uh, chronic pancreatitis can be silent for a long time. And if a patient becomes, again, symptomatic, you have to care about cancer. Uh, calcification are, are push around the mass, and uh, of course, uh, there are ex extra pancreatic spreading of the tumor that can help for the diagnosis. PIT FDG uh, has been a very exciting method for the diagnosis, but uh, there are some uh, 
failure in the sensitivity and specificity of cancer. So they do not exceed 80% uh, because of this, this is a very inflammatory cancer usually and you have false positive. And do not forget that you can have, you can find a strong and diffuse uh, signal in some benign pancreatitis. Here I present you a typical uh, autoimmune pancreatitis with a diffuse uh, staining and uh, with a steroid test, this staining uh, disappears uh, quickly with 30 milligrams of steroids. And you have, of course, false negative in diabetes uh, in this patient. Endoscopic uh, ultrasonography remains probably the best method, of course, in experience hates, hence. The, 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 the most uh, useful uh, of this technique is to perform biopsy in a locally advanced non-resectable cancer. But sometimes, when we perform uh, detection and screening, as shown Margaret Temper before, we can find in patient at risk, for example, BRAC2 mutation of uh, familial multiplica uh, uh, melanoma, sorry, melanoma, you can find some very small three or four millimeter uh, hypoechogeric uh, foci, and if you make a biopsy, you can find sometimes uh, panin free. It's very important for therapeutic decision in this asymptomatic patient. Finally, uh, contrast US is going to develop, probably. Uh, you have uh, hypovascularization in cancer in contrast to pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, for example, and it's very useful for differential diagnosis. Elastometry as well can be useful, but both techniques do not provide histology, of course. And for this histology, we have to discuss when, how, and what results. The problem for the pancreatic mass, pancreatic tumor, and biopsy uh, is why to biopsy? Probably because uh, you make a navigation between uh, several uh, danger and uh, an appropriate resection for pancreatitis should be very deleterious in a patient with chronic or autoimmune pancreatitis, while uh, proposing uh, steroids in a patient with a cancer should delay the good treatment, I mean surgery or chemotherapy. So do not, do not forget that adenocarcinoma is much more frequent than pseudotumoral pancreatitis. And probably in the gastroenterologic uh, world, we see some deviation of uh, diagnosis in young patients. A uh, lot of uh, um, doctors uh, propose the diagnosis of autoimmune pancreatitis and try steroid. Do not, do not forget that adenocarcinoma is much more frequent. And do not hesitate to uh, biopsy any mass you feel doubtful. And uh, when to biopsy? In a patient with pain, sometimes jaundice, you have performed imaging, you ask whether the mass is benign or malignant. It's likely malignant for a reason of local sign, maybe metastase, and uh, what is the type? Of course, the first question, is it an adenocarcinoma? On imaging, you suspect other type of tumor, for example, uh, neuroendocrine tumor because it's well, well vascular and well limited mass. So, uh, of course, you have a specific management for this uh, mass. When you have the proof of adenocarcinoma, uh, the patient is resectable, is not the case, is not resectable. So you should have a biopsy before embarking the patient in a medical treatment uh, like chemotherapy or radiotherapy, or if you decide best supportive care, of course. And uh, if the patient uh, has a mass who should be resected, you ask the, the, the question of neoadjuvant treatment, and if you want to do that, you, you, you must have a biopsy, of course, to avoid a wrong diagnosis. And if you don't want to make a neoadjuvant treatment and go directly to surgery, you don't need to perform biopsy with the risk of this biopsy to, to cause uh, pancreatitis. Uh, cytology, uh, uh, USFNR, sorry, uh, can uh, gain some material, uh, but this material is not always a large core biopsy. Very often it's only a small sheet of cells, uh, cytology, which can be conventional or using monolayer uh, technique. More easy when you can get some microfragments, you can perform to have histology into cell blocks, and sometimes you see 
uh, that uh, it's uh, pretty difficult to find the uh, area of interest where is the cancer. I uh, very to be the, the pathologists have to be very cautious, and sometimes you perform conventional histology with a good biopsy. But it depends not only of the operator, but also of the type of tumor, of the consistence of tumor. And what is very important that for the pathologist, he must have very precise information. I suspect autoimmune pancreatitis or chronic. I suspect a cancer. The condition of FNI, it was difficult. We have small, uh, small sheets of, uh, of tumor, only one uh, aspiration or five. It's very different. What the size of the needle, everything is very important for the pathologist. And often you have poor material, but you can try to put, uh, to, to, to do some uh, coloration for mucus, for example, to, to ensure that these are uh, uh, ductal uh, cells uh, of a cancer. But do not forget uh, as well that uh, when you have uh, evident metastatic disease, you must perform the more simple routes. And in this patient who was, who was addressed to perform OSFNR, we prefer to perform a simple liver biopsy. The tumor is very near and easy to access, so uh, avoid uh, general anesthesia and endoscopic biopsy uh, through OSFNR. But uh, we will ask more uh, to the pathologist in the next future than usual histology, I mean cancer or not cancer. Uh, we, we will need in the future information uh, for predictive and prognostic markers. Just two examples. For example, we perform that, that coloration, on, uh, that staining on a small biopsy, USFNA, and we were able to uh, assess uh, overexpression of hand one on this small material, and of course we have to validate it hand one uh, to perform it routinely. We have to validate it hand one in non-resectable uh, tumor because it has been validated uh, for its prognosis value in uh, in uh, patient with resected tumor. So we have to to, to do the, the job, but it's probably feasible uh, using a USFNA. Uh, just remember that if you perform a SFNA of a locally advanced tumor, for example, uh, there is a problem of heterogeneity of the tumor, and on this specimen, uh, oh, sorry, no, it's, does not, it does not appear, but you have uh, area with strong staining of N1 and area with no staining, so uh, it depends on the, where the needle is going, and sometimes uh, you could uh, have a wrong conclusion uh, with a small needle aspiration. So uh, consider tumor heterogeneity uh, in the future when you perform such markers. For example, of course, SPARC uh, will be uh, addressed in the stroma to decide, uh, for example, to propose nap packet Axel. And uh, on this, uh, on this uh, paper, uh, we don't know exactly the technique that the IOTO use, but it's possible to do it, but again, only if you have large biopsy because uh, SPARC is mainly expressed in the stroma and not, on, uh, uh, not so easy on tumor cell to detect. Uh, we don't know if there are biological differences between the primary and the metastase, so if you biopsy the primary, uh, is, it is exactly the same uh, genetic biologic, uh, biology for the tumor. We don't know. And maybe the tumor will change during the course of the disease and the biological abnormality could change as well. Finally, my take-home message are for today, uh, diagnosis of pancreatic cancer remains difficult even we have a lot of new imaging uh, technique uh, to remain difficult. Don't forget never the clinical context to assess the diagnosis of a pancreatic mass. We all know that there are limitations of serum marker, particularly CR99, uh, and imaging method as well. Most choose uh, most convenient route for biopsy, and biopsy, uh, for example, um, liver metastase before embarking the patient to general anesthesia. 
and have a close collaboration with your pathologist to discuss what and how you, you, the biopsy was performed. And finally, we have to optimize to, uh, the, the, the analysis of material, trying to push the knowledge into the predictive and prognostic marker, if we can do that on very small biopsy. Thank you very much.